Hello and welcome back to our channel, Kinterfont to Pippa. Um, first of all I'd like to say sorry our video was late last week. Um, we had a lot of rain and other problems and things to do, the lessons that we've been going to eating up a lot of time. Um, and the reason we're even later is uh, our lovely Gerhard uh, sent us another package full of wonderful wood things which got me motivated to get into my workshop and start doing some jobs. I was making a, a little grinding station to sharpen my wood chisels and I was uh, cutting some metal with my safety glasses on and four days ago I got a piece of steel, in, well a piece of grinding spark in my eye and I, I don't know if you can see that it's, it's actually, well it's not too bad this morning but it's, uh, it's pretty swollen. The morning it happened, uh, we called the hospital at about 12 o'clock because we know the eye specialist is in Cavilla and we didn't know if Castello Branco treats the eye and rather than driving there and then having to drive back again, we called the hospital and they said yes we've got an emergency eye department but they shut at one o'clock in the afternoon for the entire day, so I missed out. The following day we had our residency appointments for our biometric cards for all three of us, so we I woke up in the morning, my eye actually felt really, really good. No pain, the swelling had gone down. So we went for the, the residency meeting because if I cancel that, I'll probably wait another two years. So it's important that we did it. So I did that, but it finished at two o'clock and obviously the eye department shut again at one o'clock. So we came home. I thought everything had got, I thought the piece of muck had come out of my eye. Nine o'clock last night, my eye starts swelling up and I'm in absolute agony and I've not slept for two nights because I'm just streaming with water. So it's now 9.15 in the morning and I'm off to CV to the hospital to hope that they're gonna get this out of my eye because it's driving me nuts. I would like to add he has been using eye solution to try and clean it out. Oh yeah, no, I've got everything here. I've got two bottles, one's an antibiotic, the other one's a... Um, uh, an eye solution. An eye, an eye wash. Um, it's been helping a little bit, but I think I've got a little shard of something stuck in my eyeball and it's scratching my eyelid, but let's go see the professionals. Well, I'm at the hospital. The girls have had to leave me because of, there's a lot of building work going on. So I'm wandering around trying to find the entrance to uh, the emergency. Thankfully I'm not in pain this morning, but there's something definitely rolling around in my eye that I can't get out. I'm just worried it hasn't gone rusty. I've just been seen by the triage nurse and I'm waiting for the person to look at my eye. Oh. My special bracelet. I hope it's not too long of a wait because it's really starting to hurt now. Well, I'm on my way out. Well, this is turning into a bit of a nightmare. I've walked around for 40 minutes now. My eyes starting to hurt. I've used five public telephone boxes so not one of them works. Don't know why I'm following all the instructions, but. put the money in like it says insert coins and they come straight out of the bottom it says here lift the handset dull the number put the coin talk no that doesn't work either so I'm really don't know this is ridiculous as we're a Mayo customer I'm gonna go and try in the Mayo shop see if they'll do me a favor and ring Sandra they let me use their phone so Sandra's going to come and pick me up, but she's uh, in the supermarket. So I'm going to sit down because I've not, I've done nothing but sit down in the hospital and walk and walk and walk around CB trying to find a telephone that works. And not one of them works, which is weird. They're not damaged. They all function okay. But I'm putting the coins in and it's just not calling. So I'm going to go and get a well-deserved cold beer. 
don't know if you guys can see my eye now. I can't see out of it. It's like having a sheet of frosted glass across the front of it, but... I'm going to go to the dockers for a, a beer to wait for Sandra. And this is where the market will be, I think. I might be wrong that Molly might do. Molly and I are going to go into the city council and ask hopefully when the fair, when we might know about the fair, whether we can do it or not. Well, that didn't do us a lot of good, they just, haven't got a clue. Just wait a bit longer. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just wait. Right, off to the pharmacy to get my drops. You know the crochet things they do, they have on the trees out here? It mm -hmm. isn't just Portugal, they also, I believe it's either China or Japan also do the same thing. Yeah. What's it, honey? Get behind him. I've got pain relief. Mum bought some chicken on the way home. <laughs> and she stopped in the driveway to eat some of it. And two dogs jumped in the truck. They look a bit interested, don't they? Lucy's got a little bit of both. Lucy! <laughs> Lulu, what have you got? Oh, this is going to be awkward because mum's quite short. So we are off to CB as mum has got a doctor's appointment. Hospital. And I am hopefully going to combine that with getting some stickers printed for my wax mark business. So I thought we'd take you guys along with us. So we have made it to Castilla Branco and I am about to go into this store here and hopefully get some of my stickers printed. Make sure they get my <laughs> So we have just had to come back to work junior as my stickers with all of my fragrance oils are the wrong size. So I have a business card here and I will be emailing them the updated version and they will get all of my stickers made and give me a call when everything is finished and produced. We've just popped to Lidl to get a little bit of food shopping before we go to the hospital and I just thought I'd show you the beautiful view. Even Lidl has a really nice view of the mountains. And we live somewhere in this little cluster of mountain here. So it is currently 6.30 and we have only just got back from Casella Branco and it has been an exhausting day. And now off up to do the goats before we cook dinner and I can finally get some well needed sleep. <laughs> um, a quick update on mum. She has sleep paralysis sleep apparently i have sleep apnea oh sleep apnea sorry um my rheumatoid arthritis at the moment is under control it's a good which thing is good um but they are referring me to a surgeon to have surgery on my knee um what else did he say possibly surgery on your spine and your hands oh yeah my spine just keep taking the morphine basically which there you go. Um, what else did he say? Oh, they're changing my 
medication for injections in the hopes that it stops making me sick. But she is on about her... Oh. It's it's a, a drug that they use to treat um, cancer, but they also use it to treat rheumatoid arthritis. It It's meant to stop the good bacteria the good blood cells fighting the bad no it's the other way around it's the bad blood cells fighting the good cells it's the other way around well they're fighting with each other so does it really matter <laughs> well gross. i don't know anyway my blood fights with each other that's it um so yeah they're changing it so i have to have injections now on a monday and hopefully that might might stop me keep being sick but if it doesn't then camera down my throat so yeah. right well we're off off to do goats off to do goats now we've put the shopping away or well, we need to put the shopping away yeah oh the joys of a day in Stella Branco and we're back tomorrow because we have to pick Molly's stickers up tomorrow because they couldn't complete them in the same day because they had an issue with the stickers on the back which have my ufi numbers which is a unique formula information which has to go on the back of all of my products for every fragrance oil all of the ingredients and everything so i've got to redo them tonight email them hopefully get them there for them when they open in the morning to collect them for friday to do a market on sunday because why give myself like an extra week absolutely push myself to the point of stress so off to goats and get everything ready and yeah. fun. Your dad. <sighs> Another day on the farm, or well, off the farm, I suppose. <laughs>
Good morning, everybody. It is about 9.30 in the morning and we are off to a market in Alpadrina. And I thought I'd bring you guys along and show us setting up the table and everything. So off we go. We have arrived in Alpadrina and I'm going to start unloading the truck and taking everything to where we're going to set up. And we are going to be setting up outside today. Let's just hope it doesn't rain today. <laughs> So I'm back in the field again after all the, I don't know, what, three days of heavy rain now. You can see how it's growing. You can see uh, a few of the bald patches in the field where the pigs got in this field. They weren't in here for very long, but they did a bit of damage. You can see they've there's a hole down there. They've troughed up. They've done this bit. The, the lower field that they'd really cleaned up, I reseeded that. And then they came back again, didn't they? I caught them on camera, um, but we didn't have it recording at the time. I've been setting up cameras everywhere. You can see I've got one up there, which was to allow me to see the pigs coming in. I was able to see them on camera. I got about here from the house. It's only down there. By the time I got here, these pigs had started running out of my field and they ran because the noise was pretty horrendous <laughs> all i could hear i mean look they've come back and they've completely troughed it i could see one pig there one pig over there and i could see two in the background and they weren't small pigs but they've run down there to my gate which i want to go and check i mean i raked this area here i reseeded the whole all patches and I raked it gently and you can see they've completely troughed it up I'd actually say they've been in again by the look of it although with the heavy rain so look you can see they came up here that you can see he's troughed his way in a line shoving with his nose and they cleaned up over there they have I mean I think I've lost 20 20 percent of the field which is which is quite a bit to lose actually I don't think they've been under that fence again but they have made a mess. Yeah, you can see where the pigs are actually scrambling through. And you can see the angle of the fence is, is pushed that way where they've gone underneath it. So I think they've actually come back in here again. I'm going to go and get some rebar and stake this down. It's nice seeing them come in on the camera to catch them. But I'd just rather they didn't come in at all. <laughs> They really have trashed it. Oh well, I'm hoping they haven't picked up all the seed and with this rain, some of it's going to regrow, but I mean, you can see they've taken at least 80% of this field away. Pretty disheartening when you've spent all the time cleaning it and changing the tools on the tractor and the fuel that you've used. You spend your time prepping this and then the ball come in, it's, it's frustrating. And I can't just go and shoot the pigs or I can't go and trap them or, or anything like that. You know, like the sort of in America, you see these guys with these drop down cages and they catch a group of 10 of them and then take them away. I can't do that here in Portugal. You have to apply to the gun club for those guys to then come in and, and color load of them. Because I think after the fires, everyone around here is really struggling. One, the fire kills off the feed and the natural environment the pigs have got to live in. 
so they come closer to farms and to idiots like me that sow fields with perfect food for, for pigs so it causes a lot of problems not just to me you hear a lot of the locals complaining um there's a chap i know that's got he's got land right over there on the other side of the river a couple of years ago they were there protecting his land they've had to put boulders that you can only lift up with a digger and concrete they put the huge boulders on the inside of their fence and then they concrete the fencing into the huge boulders because even when they put concrete posts in the ground um, and concrete them in the pigs have got enough strength in their neck they just lift them out of the ground and go under the fence so they can be a real pest to keep out I just hope they don't come in here and eat the rest of this I think from memory this is three weeks growth now so I'm quite quite happy with that not happy with the loss but sell of Eve it's life isn't it if either I think you might have remembered it was probably last summer now I built a, um, a little sort of wooden hut a little house for cats the street cats in the village because there's a lovely lady in our village that looks after the street cats unfortunately she's had a few problems some of the people in the village are not keen on the street cats and somebody put a load of food out with poison in it and, and killed some of the kittens and the cats which is pretty evil really isn't it to go out of your way and poison food and put it down for innocent little animals especially when they live at the top of the village in the semi-derelict area okay there's people that live there and there's big numbers of cats you know which can be a problem I get that but killing them come on so the poor lady is meant to get help from the city council and from our local um, junta and they've not been very good at helping the poor lady they've built another little shelter i believe out of a, a little chest of drawers but it's got no roof on it at the moment they've just put some plastic and i was talking to the lady on, uh, yesterday on facebook so i'm going to take her a piece of tin at around six o'clock tonight and we'll go and video some of the cats and take molly along we'll have a look at the old house that i built for them and their new one and try and waterproof the new little building for them a bit more to keep these cats dry and warm in this pretty horrible weather we're getting right now well, Molly and I have come up here this morning to do the goats, which is here. And we've noticed the delightful wild boar have been up here. As you can see, digging everything up. They're obviously here because we have two, no, actually we have more than two, um, cork oaks. So they're obviously here after the acorns off of this tree here but as you can see the mess they make is horrendous right must get on do the goats and maybe we'll see if we can go and find some waterfalls so eddie decided to come with us So I've decided to come for a walk with the dogs and go on a little mushroom hunt. I am far by any means a mushroom expert.
Eddie just led me straight to the jackpot. <laughs> So apparently this is a delicacy in Russia and some other countries of Eastern Europe when picked in salt. Hmm. Both me and mum have been ill for the past week and a half. We have taken COVID tests and thankfully it isn't COVID. It's just some flu we've picked up and I am not feeling great. So please, I do apologise if you can't really understand me because of my sore throat. And I also apologise if the video quality isn't great as I'm filming on my phone as we've been having some problems with our GoPro, which I will touch on in a second. So dad is feeling a little better. He can see a little bit more, but he still isn't 100%. So on to GoPro. GoPro sent us a replacement camera for the camera we have currently been filming with. But the new one they, saw, the new one they sent us had the same fault. So we've had to send both of the GoPro cameras back. And hopefully we should be receiving the replacement next week. Hopefully. And a quick update for all of you kind people who helped to purchase one of the water feeders. It has finally arrived and when dad is feeling slightly more up to it, we are going to get this installed in the goat barn as soon as possible. We are also going to be announcing the winner of the Blue Rams Light Fork giveaway. So well done to Richard Tayshen. I do apologise if I'm butchering your last name. So please contact us via email. The link for that will be down in the description below and we will pass on all of your email address and all of your details to Blue Rams and hopefully that will get shipped out to you in the next couple of weeks. So thank you guys so much for watching our video as always. So don't forget to like, subscribe and we will see you hopefully back here next week.